This Rise and Shine podcast series has been made possible by the generosity of the Zeitelman Family Foundation, which is committed to the unity and continuity of the Jewish people through meaningful and relevant Jewish education and wisdom. It's not easy to be scrupulously honest with ourselves, and it's important to remember that in the pursuit of peace, we will often apologize, not because we're certain that we're in the wrong, but because we value our relationships more than our egos. This is Rise and Shine, a podcast that offers timeless wisdom and uplifting meditations to fill your heart, feed your soul, and start your day on a positive note. Here is Adrian Gold Davis. I'm going to share a Hebrew phrase that finds its way onto countless wedding rings, necklaces, bracelets, and other amulets. It's the quintessential statement of love and is a phrase of commitment and passion and bonding. It comes from our text called Shira Shirim, the Song of Songs, and it goes like this. Ani lidodi bidodi li. I am my beloved's, and my beloved is mine. But did you know that the first letters of those words of that verse spell out the word or the name Elul. Those letters are Aleph, Lamed, Vav, Lamed. This acronym spells out as well the month of Elul on the Hebrew calendar. That's the month that precedes Rosh Hashanah. And in the month of Elul, we begin the long preparations required to stand in judgment before our Creator on Rosh Hashanah. We do a fearless and thorough moral inventory of ourselves, and we begin the process of the spiritual, behavioral, and emotional reset that enables us to begin again anew, to work on the things that help us align with our deeply held values and ideals. So while Jewish thought sees us as having each day the opportunity to recalculate, the month of Elul, it's on supercharge. We believe that God is very near to us then and wants us to return to our best selves. And while the poetic words of Shira Shirim are a love song between two beloveds, they are also a representation of the Jewish people and their love affair with our Creator. When we find ourselves off course, lost, or utterly turned around, our GPS, our God Positioning Service, can take us back to our default position, and that default position is not shameful or sinful or somehow sullied but rather is our perfectly imperfect souls that yearn for refinement and growth, for greatness, and for dignity. You see, we are not broken. We are not damaged goods. We are human beings with aspirations of greatness who will take the wrong turn from time to time. We don't believe in original sin, nor do we see ourselves as tabula rasa. Rather, we're here on earth to refine and elevate our souls in this particular transmigration or incarnation. We are uniquely positioned to do so as well. And everything we face, be it challenge or circumstance, be it triumph or tragedy, is part of a lifelong spiritual journey that winds and twists and turns our greatness as I always reiterate, comes not in what happens to us, but rather who we are in the face of what happens to us. So, there are things we do, rituals we take on to wake us up to who we can be, who we are at our core. In our temples and synagogues every morning in Elul except for Shabbat, we sound the shofar. Those loud blasts are like a spiritual alarm clock to awaken our souls and kickstart the spiritual accounting we're meant to be doing. There are also special prayers that are called slichot, prayers of apologies and yearnings for forgiveness. These penitent prayers arouse our desire for purity. Elul is also a time to begin the process of asking forgiveness for wrongs we may have done to other people. You see, Jewish thought teaches us that while God can forgive us for sins committed between ourselves and our Creator, God cannot forgive us for sins committed against another person. God recuses Himself, so to speak, until we have first obtained forgiveness from the person we've wronged. It can be painful and embarrassing, and ultimately, 
empowering and euphoric. So much of our life is spent building false narratives to rationalize our mistakes. There is so much liberation in owning your stuff and in actually going to those you might have harmed intentionally or inadvertently and asking for forgiveness because we can't stand in front of our Creator if we have somehow wounded His other beloved children. In 12-step programs, this is a vital component of recovery. It's called Step 4 and 5 of the 12 Steps, and it goes like this. Step 4 made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. And Step 5 admitted to God, to ourselves, and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. While introspection and self-reflection should be part of our day-to-day personal spiritual inventories, during Elul, we actively work even harder to prepare for the days of awe ahead. It's not easy to be scrupulously honest with ourselves, and it's important to remember that in the pursuit of peace, we will often apologize, not because we're certain that we're in the wrong, But sometimes we will apologize because we value our relationships more than our egos. Every year, I put out this mass message as well as go to individuals who I know I missed the mark with. And that mass message asks people to personally reach out to me if I have somehow let them down or hurt them without being aware of it. And in my life, given that I interact with thousands of different people, I can inadvertently cause pain, hurt, or disappointment. I implore people to let me know. And you know what? Every year, I get a long trail of messages saying, No, never, I love you. You could never hurt me. And I also get private messages where people do let me know how something I said or something I did hurt them or caused them grief. And I've come to yearn for those brave messages because as I attempt to refine myself, I know that I don't want to leave a trail of pain behind me. And while sometimes I cannot or do not wish to change the relationship status with someone or feel like they might now be on the mark with their assessment of my behavior, I get a chance to truly apologize for my many, many shortcomings. You know, years ago, there was a custom to wear uncut diamonds as status symbols. And they looked like stones, like driveway stones, not diamonds. But if you knew in life that often stones are dumped at your feet in the form of criticism or complaints for other people, what if you imagined that each of those stones might contain a five-carat diamond of truth to help you become a more sensitive and sensitized person. Well, I know what you'd do. You'd sort through those stones carefully, disposing of those which don't have value, but carefully mining the pile for those that do. This Elul, as we prepare to stand before our beloved, let's make sure that we do the work of cleaning up the messes we leave behind and invite the input of others to help illuminate our blind spots. I cannot imagine a more empowering month than the one that now lays ahead. Thanks for listening to Rise and Shine. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to Momentum Podcasts on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Join Adrian again next time for more timeless wisdom and uplifting meditations that fill your heart, feed your soul, and start your day on a positive note. This podcast was sponsored by the Zeitelman Family Foundation. Spread the wisdom. Inspire Jewish individuals around the globe by supporting Momentum's podcasts. To sponsor, contact podcast at MomentumUnlimited.org. You're listening to a Momentum podcast. For unlimited inspiration, wisdom, and empowerment, visit MomentumUnlimited.org.